Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Vinyl Talk with Tavis. And I'm Tavis. Today's video is going to be about my newest finds of jazz, R&B, and gospel music. I found some great stores recently while I was just walking down the streets of Kansas City. There's a, a special place called Westport and they just have some wonderful stores. They have a lot of these CBD oil stores. I know you've heard of that, CBD oil. And I was walking past and saw this one store that I think it's called, It's a Beautiful Day. <laughs> and I saw this great picture of Jimi Hendrix. And they have some stickers and some wonderful postcards and things. And I walked in and I found treasures, absolute treasures. But first, let's start with, let's just get right to it. There's a store here in Kansas City called Records with Merit. And when I saw this, I had to get the fantastic, phenomenal, incomparable Joe Williams sing. Joe Williams sings Count Basie. Now this is a reissue. It's 180 grams. It's beautiful black vinyl. But I was interested to find out that this was, um, I think, yeah, this was the, the original artwork for it. Can you see that? But this has been reissued with the photography of uh, William Claxton. He's an iconic photographer and he took these wonderful photographs and I think there are a lot of records done with these different photos that are colorized and things like that. It's really nice. And this album has the song, Every Day I Have the Blues. Joe Williams, when he uh, sung with Count Basie on this collaboration, it took Count Basie's orchestra and his career to another level. And he had been working with other uh, band leaders, but when he worked with Count Basie, it was on. And there are some fantastic interviews with Joe Williams on YouTube. If you just type in Joe Williams interviews, you'll find some lovely, some lovely sit downs with Joe Williams talking about his life. And he was just a very elegant man, um, full of charm, easy going, laid back. Um, they call him the, the blues baller because that man, this man could really sing. And I've never owned an album by him or with him singing. And I've been singing his music for a long time. I've been singing the songs, um, All Right, Okay, You Win. But when you hear every day, every day, I have the blues every day, every day, Every day, I have the blues. Okay, and when he does that ending note, this is the first song on the on the album. When he does that ending note, he goes into his falsetto. Isn't that great? Great looking vinyl. Black vinyl. And he hits the last note and goes, Ooh. and he holds it for like 40 seconds. And then the band ends the song, great song. Every day I have the blues. I would do a, a needle drop, but YouTube won't allow it. One more thing about this album and this song, Every Day I Have the Blues. When my grandma would get very upset with my grandpa, she would go in the kitchen and start cooking and she would sing, Every Day I Have the Blues. She would say, if I feel tomorrow like I feel today, if I feel tomorrow just like I feel today, I'm going to pack my suitcase <laughs> and make my getaway. And so me and the other family members, my sister and stuff, we'd be like, what is she singing up in this kitchen? We never knew. Now I know she was singing about the blues. Great album. You need to get this if you don't have it. Joe Williams, 
a phenomenal jazz singer. Found this album here. Where did I find this? Oh, I found this at the um, at the place I was just talking about. You know, they have the CBD oil and, and very psychedelic place. Lots of candles and incense. And then this big room of records. I was shocked. All types of jazz, all types of soul and R&B, pop music, everything. And I saw this. 99 cents. 99 cents. Had to get it. This album features my two favorite people. I, it's hard to say. I must say it. Oscar Peterson is my favorite jazz pianist. I, I just have to say it. Hands down. This album features Ella Fitzgerald, my favorite female jazz vocalist, and Oscar. Um... And Ray Brown is on the bass. This was recorded in 1975. The best song on here, in my opinion, is the last song on side two, which is April in Paris. It has, unless until I hear another piano solo that really hits me in my heart, this song with Oscar playing the um, the piano solo. I'm going to leave a link below. To me, it's the best piano solo I've ever heard. When he takes those long fingers and plays that long solo, it is just, it tickles my ears. It makes my ears cry. It makes my whole body just cry. It's so beautiful. It's a longing that I've never felt before in any other jazz piano solo. It just sends me. And then when Ella comes back in to do her scatting, to me it's like she's saying to herself, hmm, I can't do any better than that, so let me just do the best I can and let's end this song. <laughs> because after he plays, what can you do? He is phenomenal. This is a great record, Ella and Oscar. Piano, vocals, some bass here and there. Fantastic. Awesome. Then we have Count Basie with Sarah Vaughn. What's it called? Just Count Basie and Sarah Vaughn. Yeah, Sarah Vaughn and Count Basie. Sarah Vaughn has the most... Have you really paid attention to people's vibrato when they sing? Sarah Vaughn, to me, and she maintained it throughout her career, she has, she had one of the most distinguishable vibratos in all of jazz vocals. The first song she does on here is Perdido. Perdido. But she doesn't use any vibrato at first. And when she brings in that vibrato, it just makes you go, oh, <laughs> she just does it. How can I, how can I put it? She goes, Badido, a dupa, badada, 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 badido. It's just beautiful. And all the songs on here, you turn the tables on me. The gentleman is dope. The gentleman is a dope. <laughs> Sorry. Um, two different meanings. If, if a gentleman is dope, that means he's good, apparently. If he is a dope, he's bad. Did you understand that? Anyway. Lover man, oh, where can you be? There are such things. Just great songs. You can read it for yourself. You need this. This was $3.99, as you can tell. I was happy to get it. The album is in great shape. Roulette. Records. Roulette records beautiful beautiful black vinyl phenomenal vocals i would get everything from sarah Vaughan if i could i'm going to get my sarah Vaughan collection up then i found this other oscar peterson album with nelson riddle kind of a popish album jazz pop 
um, it's a little higher elevated than elevator music. It's really good. You know, it has the uh, the wonderful standards, My Foolish Heart, Round Midnight, where it features a lot of strings and um, some horns. And the wonderful, fantastic Os Oscar Peterson is just playing the... He could be more involved, but I guess it would mess up the strings. But I love this album as well. I was very, very happy to find this. I was so pumped. Now let's get to some R&B. You all don't know nothing about this. This is the R&B part. I have a little bit of R&B. You all don't know about this one, do you? Do you all know Mavis Staples? This album came out in 1989. It's called Time Waits for No One. <laughs> Ain't that bad? She was good. She was, I think she was 50 years old when she was doing this record. And she's still recording and still touring. This was produced by Prince. When she got involved with Prince, her... See Paisley Records? When she got involved with Prince, her career took a new... Went to a new level. Interesting. I'm going to leave a link down below so you can hear. Interesting with Prince. Prince is all over this record. Wow. He also did another album with Mavis called um, The Voice. I can't find it on vinyl. I don't think it was released on vinyl, but it is on CD. That is a fantastic release, full of great music. It's just Prince all down, uh, up and down. Prince, Prince, Prince. But they collaborated so beautifully together. Wow. Mm. When she found out Prince had passed away, um, she was doing a concert and she just boohooed and she kept singing. And um, they got along really good. I love Mavis Staples. She's a staple in the R&B world. Speaking of staples. Now, when I saw this, you all, the Soul Train Music Awards came on last week, I, I believe. So I was very taken aback and found it to be very ironic when I found this. This is a compilation um, in which Don Cornelius, he picks 22 of the greatest soul hits of all time <laughs> up to that point. And this is full of great music. It's just full of great music. Can you see that? I think this was done in 72, 73. And it has Mickey and Sylvia, Love is Strange, The Moments, Love on a Two-Way Street. I found love on a two-way street. Hey, Frida Payne, Band of Gold. Um, I Can Tina Turner, Proud Mary. The Edwin Hawkins Singers, Oh Happy Day, Sly and the Family Stone, Everyday People. La, 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 means I love you. And I just recently posted me playing um, Honeycomb's one ads. Beautiful song. This album. The cover is beat up. Look at that. So I'm going to go to Discogs and buy this again. But have you noticed? I think we've, I've heard people talk about this in the VC. It seems to me that the albums that were made back in the day in the, in the 70s, the 60s, 70s, they were in good quality. They, were, they, they just stood up to any type of wear and tear. The records these days are so flimsy. This album here is old, but I cleaned that puppy up. It's on my turntable now. I cleaned it up. It sounds great. There's not much static, if any. Great sounds. Great sounding record. Good hits on there. 
I found this. This is just a 12 inch of the song Centipede by Reby Jackson. This is Michael Jackson's sister. This came out in 1984. Yeah. Centipede. Whoa, wow. When that came out, I was just entranced. Centipede! Your love is like a raging fire. Like when you crawled into the bathroom window to strike with your desire. When the centipede is hot, you're bound to feel the fire. Oh, like a centipede you've got. I don't know the rest of the word. Awesome song. Martha, Martha Wash. She does some... She does, with the background vocals, she does background vocals for this. And she also, she does some ad-libs. And I always thought that it was Reby doing the ad-libs. But it was Martha Wash. I was so glad to have found that out. This is a great album. Great 12-inch. It has the, uh, the original song. And then on the back, there's the instrumental version. Awesome album. Let's look at it, please. Got to show you. I love to show the vinyl. I love to show it. Yes, yes, yes. Look at that. Gorgeous black vinyl on Columbia Records. Yep. Song written by Michael Jackson. Y'all don't know nothing about this either. You don't know about the time. What time is it? It's time to talk about the time. This guy was on the Soul Train Music Awards. He tore it up. He went back way back to this. This came out, was it in 1983? Please say it was, Tavis. Can I find it? Hmm. Let's look on the record and see. Oh, on Warner Brothers, 1982. On Warner Brothers Records. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Friends and loved ones, I tell you, this is a jam of a record. 99, no, it wasn't 99 cent. I'm sorry. I think this was um, six something, six dollars. Man, this is great music. It features, of course, at that time we have Jimmy Jam and we have Terry Lewis, Jesse Johnson, Morris Day. I don't know these two. I know they're, I know them, but I forgot their names. This is before Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis really got busy with like, had he done the SOS band yet? I'm not sure if they, if they had done SOS band. But anyway, this is a great album. Great album, The Time. Now we're going to get into some gospel music. Can the church say amen? Can the church say amen, amen? Well, No Shave November. I think I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing okay. Gospel. Where would I be without gospel music? This is Vanessa Bell Armstrong. I found this in the store that I was talking about that had the picture of Jimi Hendrix and all that. I was so shocked. This album was $1.99. In wonderful condition. This is Vanessa Bell Armstrong, ladies and gentlemen. Vanessa Bell Armstrong, to me, on Jive Records, to me, she is the Aretha Franklin of gospel music. Even though Aretha Franklin was gospel, Vanessa did exclusive gospel music. And when I heard this woman's voice when I was a boy, I was so taken aback by the style that she had. Um, she worked with great gospel artists such as Thomas Whitfield, Walter Hawkins, Edwin Hawkins, uh, John P. Key. But during this time, 
she really went contemporary. I think this was probably her most contemporary gospel album that she had ever done. And um, I loved it. I still love it. So when I found this record, I was just overjoyed. She has vocals that are so raw and are so rough. I don't know. It's just ridiculous. It's beautiful to, to listen to. Your ears will never be the same. Find Vanessa Bell Armstrong in concert. You will be like, what did I just listen to? What did I just hear? Her voice is just rough. It could be light and tender, but when she gets in the spirit, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She has beautiful runs, great vibrato. Every song on here is gorgeous. Every song. I think my favorite song on here is Count on Your Love. So this is her most, to me, her most contemporary gospel record. She goes way out there. It's it's very highly, very produced, very highly produced. It has that 80s feel. This was done in 1989. So, wow, she, really, she went out there with this record. It's called Wonderful One. I'm sorry I didn't say that. Wonderful One. Very, very contemporary. But I love every song. I love every song on here. Vanessa Bell Armstrong. I think I have some more of hers as well. Now this man, and she was born in Detroit. You know, Detroit has, Detroit, Michigan has made some fantastic, phenomenal singers. We have Aretha Franklin. We have the Clark Sisters. We have the Motown sound going on here. We have so many people in Detroit who has come out fighting with their music, and they're just fantastic. This is James Moore. Reverend James Moore. I found this at the same store. How much was it? What does that say right there? Tell me, what does that say? What's less than two? What's one less than two and one more than zero? A dollar. Reverend James Moore. Mm. Hold on. The time has just left. When I was a boy, I would play this cassette over and over. Bread of heaven, I get a blessing every day. Endow me. Woo! If you felt like you have not been to church after you've listened to this, you must be a heathen. Wow, this record will take you so much to church. You will be on your floor repenting for every little thing you've done today. Malico Records. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. He's working with choirs on here. It's just phenomenal. I'll leave some, some links. James, uh, yeah, James Moore, you all, he sang until his death. This man, I think he dealt with severe diabetes. And he would sing in his wheelchair. He would get up from his wheelchair. There was a point at the end of his life when he was blind. He was singing blind with diabetes. He didn't care about nothing. He was very obese. He would get up and just sing and he'd be sweating and he couldn't, he'd take off his glasses and you could tell that he couldn't see because his eyes would be here and there. He didn't care. He loved God and sang until the spirit of the Lord came down. I love this, this record. This record is great. Now we have the phenomenal, the one and only, Mr. Al Green, Soul Survivor. I wore this cassette out back in the day. I didn't get the, uh, the record. This has the song Soul Survivor and the fantastic Everything is gonna be alright. He's coming back like he said he would. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be alright. He's coming back for the true and good. That's a good song. There's a video for this song. You have to 
search it. I'll leave links down below. Good, good music. 1987. Yep, man, I'm good. I'm getting good at this. Just guessing when the songs came out. Good music. Another Al Green classic. This album came out right maybe two years after this one. This is called I Get Joy, 1989. Yep. This has the song with the collaboration um, with I'll Be Sure called um, As Long As We'll As Long As We're Together. That's a good picture of Al. As long as we're together. Good God of mine, as long as we're together. I, I must tell you, as long as we're together and the title track, I Get Joy, to me are the best songs on here. The rest of them, uh, they're okay. But when you get to as long as we're together, you feel the joy. Awesome album. Anything by Al Green, you can expect some goodness and something. I have three more to go, kids. The Mighty Clouds of Joy. Catching on. This came out in 1987 on Word Records. Classic, classic, classic music. It'll put you in the spirit. Uh, when I listen to what he's done for me, I'm going to see if I can do a needle drop with this. Let's do it right now. This song is uh, called What He's Done For Me. Listen to Joe Lagan as he preaches. He, he would preach when he'd sing. He'd tell stories. Let's listen. <laughs> We were singing for a revival meeting And people were getting up Testifying to God's goodness And one lady got up and said I thank God that I had three sons And God able me to send them all to college And I just want to thank him for that Oh Lord, that was another lady My mama loves the Mighty Clouds of Joy, her favorite singers. So, classic. Then we have the phenomenal Mr. Edwin Hawkins and the Edwin Hawkins Singers. Now, you know, this great man, he redid the song, Oh Happy Day. Became a big hit in 69, I believe, 1970. 
Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed. You know that, right? It's a, it's a standard. It's a classic. But he came out with this in 19... Ooh. Let's see. 19... Hmm, 1977 on Birthright Records. Um, the Comforter Has Come is the name of this record. This is a phenomenal record to listen to. It just takes you back to gospel when gospel sounded like gospel music. I said it. When gospel sounded like gospel music. Didn't have to cross over. They, it just sounded good. Okay, um, man, that's a classic picture. Edwin, his sister, Lynette Hawkins, his brother, Daniel. This is Shirley Miller. I don't know her name, <laughs> but great sounding group. The Edwin Hawkins singers, the comforter has come. And Edwin Hawkins was looking mighty suave, looking mighty suave. Last but not least, we have Edwin Hawkins' brother, Walter Hawkins. The first Love Alive album. I got this brand new at the same store that had the Jimi Hendrix picture for, I think it was $3. Brand new. I took off the plastic. The story with this is that Andre Crouch knew of this wonderful man and his family, the Edwin Hawkins, Walter Hawkins family. And um, Andre would listen to them sing in concerts and stuff. And so Walter has sent Andre Crouch a cassette of them singing in the church. And Andre was so thrilled and mesmerized by the cassette, by the tape, that he sent it to Ralph Carmichael who was a producer at the time of, of Andre Crouch. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, what Andre had in his hand and gave to Ralph Carmichael is what we hear on this album. The first Love Alive album. There's Love Alive 1, 2, 3, and 4. I don't think there's a 5. I could, I think there's just 4. This has the songs Follow Me, Changed, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. Yeah, I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. I'm. Will you all sing it with me? Classic album, gospel music at its finest. You all, that's all I have to show right now. Hope you all are having a great day. I want you all to have a blessed, wonderful Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? What am I thankful for? I'm thankful for life, health, and strength. I'm thankful for all of you in the VC who have welcomed me this past year and you've watched my videos and you've been subscribing to me and hitting those likes and to all of my new subscribers I thank you if you're watching this for the first time go ahead and subscribe I'd really appreciate it um, so far it's almost been a year and I've had such fun making these videos for you all I've had just great fun sharing with you what, I, what I've attained, and the VCLT has been tremendous. I watch um, as many videos as I can of all of you, and it's just been so much fun talking with you and interacting with you in the comments. So I'm very thankful for all of you out there in the YouTube world, in these YouTube streets. You all have a great Thanksgiving if I don't see you or talk to you before them. And as always, as always, as always, I'm going to sing it to you. As always, 
as always, with music, be inspired, and stay inspired. You all have a great Thanksgiving.